Hey there, I'm Alice K. Ruckelhaus from Suffering Well, and I wanted to talk some more about discontentment. All right, so last week we talked about how discontentment could be the root of a lot of sins or maybe even all of them, and hopefully you took some time to look at your five biggest sin struggles and to determine how discontentment feeds into that. Okay, so I wanted to go back and talk a little bit about scripture. <laughs> That's kind of important to bring scripture into this, right? Um, and I'm not doing it just to bring scripture into it because it's really important to have that framework. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk a little bit about one verse in Philippians, and then I'm going to give you some other passages of scripture that I want you to look at for yourself and figure out how those talk about discontentment. And I'm going to have some questions for those below in the dis in the description box. I'll have the links for those scriptures. If you know how to look things up in your Bible, you don't have to use the links. Just look them up in your Bible. But I know a lot of you are not familiar with how to find things in your Bible. So we're going to provide a link that you can use to go to each of those scriptures and to read it and then answer the questions, simple questions that we have with it. But I think that doing this Bible study on your own without me telling you, without me explaining what that means is going to be important. Okay, so I want to talk first of all, though, about Philippians 2.14. Really short verse, or at least the part that I'm going to talk about. Do everything without grumbling or disputing, or in some versions it says without complaining and arguing. Okay, so what does that have to do with what we're talking about? Okay, well, when we are discontented, we often start complaining. We complain to just ourselves. Oh, da, 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 you know? <laughs> or we complain to our friends. We complain to God. Um, we just complain, 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 complain. And a lot of times that results in arguments. Um, it can result in like those contest kind of arguments like, oh gosh, you don't have, you don't know how bad it is. What you're complaining about is nothing. This is what I'm going through, that kind of thing. Or an argument where we feel discontented because of someone else, or maybe because we think of, you know, what somebody else is doing. But sometimes it really is genuinely because of somebody else. And so we complain to them about what they're doing and how we deserve better and so on and so forth. And so that starts arguing. And St. Paul says, do all things without grumbling or disputing, without complaining or arguing. Okay, so that's really important. The, the passages I'm going to give you to look at are just a few examples from the Bible. I'll probably do like three, but there are tons of examples of people complaining in the Bible and what happens as a result. So that's what I want you to really look at is what happens as a result of our complaining. It's not good. <laughs> I'll just, you know, spoiler alert, I'll give you that. But I want you to look at exactly what happens. And then I want you to think back to those five sins that you thought about um, and you and you looked at in the context of discontent after the last video and think about, have you done any complaining, even just within your own heart about that? Um, have you complained to God? And you know what? God wants to hear our feelings. He wants to, but he, can you just imagine how, wearying it must be to just hear our complaints all the time when he has done so much for us. I mean, you know, we're complaining, oh God, I deserve better. Well, you know what? He deserves a whole lot better <laughs> than to hear our complaints. So we're going to talk um, in the future about how to overcome this discontentment and to become content and how important that is and how that helps us to fight temptation. And then we're going to go a little bit further with um, contentment and with gratefulness. All right, so I love you all. Look down in the description box and look at those passages. And I'll also put that passage that I just read to you from Philippians in there. And I hope that you will actually do this work that I'm giving you. It doesn't take that long. Um, I could just you know, talk about these passages and tell you about them and give you the quote unquote answers. But we've talked before about how in the book of James, it says that 
you need to be doers of the word, not just hearers. Because if you're just a hearer, then you delude yourself. You you fool yourself. You know, it's like James says, it's like going and looking in a mirror and seeing that, you know, you got spinach in your teeth and your hair is all messed up. He doesn't use those exact examples, but he says looking in a mirror and not doing anything about it. You just go off, you go up on stage and you talk with this big, huge piece of spinach hanging from your teeth. I've done that before. Um <laughs> And, you know, and that's like, that's really dumb, right? So it's like, we want to look at God's word. We want to really apply it to our life. So I'm trying to help you to do that. I'm trying to encourage you to do that by not giving you the quote unquote answers, but by having you look these things up. And if you don't have a lot of time, um, you know, it takes maybe five minutes per verse. So look up one verse today, look up one verse tomorrow, look up uh, another verse you know, another week, these, these videos will probably be about a week apart. So you have plenty of time to think about it and pray about it, ponder it and really work through it. But it's so important, you guys, to go to the scripture. It's so important to hear God's word. He says that his word will not return to him without accomplishing what he sent it out to do. That's his promise to us. So it's, you know, it just really benefits you to go open up your Bible and even your Bible on the, on the computer. You know, if you click on these links, then you're going to open up a, a computer Bible basically. And, um, and that's just as good. You're just hearing God's word. So I want to encourage you to do that. All right. And comment below. Let's make this a discussion. Okay. I don't want this to just be a one-way thing where I'm telling you stuff. Let's make this a discussion. Share with each other. When somebody comments, talk to them about it. You know, have have a little discussion with them. Wow. I thought that was a really good comment. Please be kind. Um, don't be critical of other people. Um, if you disagree with something, then just share your view as a separate comment. You don't need to tell that person that you disagree with them or anything. Okay, let's make this really positive. Let's help each other. Let's pray for each other. This is a really important area, you guys. Um, when we're talking about sin and how to conquer that in our lives, um, especially sins that we're really struggling with, that is super, super important. So let's really put our all into this. I love you all. I will see you later. Bye-bye.